If you're working to be the next Prime Minister in Canada, it tells me you have a lot of education to do in those fronts. And coming here and not acknowledging it, it is a first step that you need to do. Go to the microphone number two, please. Thank you. My name is uh, Marcel Head. I'm the chief of Sholay Nation. I, I really enjoy listening to what you had to present here, uh, Mr. Polyev. But you got to realize, you know, that Ottawa has a whole list of policies and legislations that dictates as to what we can and cannot do. You have to make changes within that within Parliament to make sure that bureaucracy does not stand in the way of our efforts in determining our self-determination, self-government. We talk about government to government, nation to nation discussion on self-government, but it's just not there. I told uh, the minister yesterday, you know, it's just not there. But we have a process that I've introduced, you know, with your predecessor, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. I had the privilege to meet with him and I told him in order to right the wrongs of Canada, that are the injustices that have been done to us as a people of first, first people in Canada, I told him, you know, you have to go back to the original, the spirit and intent of treaty because there is a process that you need to understand the day before treaty, the day of treaty, the day after treaty. There was a process that was missed. You see, right after the day of treaty, the treaty was taken to Ottawa, and the government of the day said, we have the land, we have access to the resources. That was wrong. That was the injustice that was done to our people. And right after that, governments of the day started legislations, policies, that removed First Nations out of the picture totally. See, when I explained to Stephen Harper, that agreement, the treaty agreement, meant to share the land, to share everything. One prospers, the other partner was to equally benefit from the resources. And we could go back to that by listening, you know, that Ottawa needs to listen to our process. Today, you know, I I present to you a win-win situation. Right now, within that solid government, we take back what is rightfully ours, the land and the resources. We take it back, but only this time. We're not going to break our own treaty, but we are going to enhance you know, a process where everybody wins. Like in terms of the process, the forestry, for example, a company within our traditional territory is prepared to do business with Shoal Lake Green Nation and Red Earth. I'm not going to name the, the particular company, but they're ready and prepared to do exactly what should have been done the day after treaty. So industry right now is waiting for First Nations to take back what is rightfully theirs, and that's the land and the resources. Today, if we were to discuss mutual benefit agreements, there's a three-way that profits could be split. One third to, to, to Canada, one third to the companies, and one third to the First Nations. I think that's a win win situation. And even the royalties, you know. But with that, you know, with the short time that we have, you know, I, I want to invite you to Saskatchewan and provide us an audience with you. You know, this, it's kind of pointless, you know, to come here and having to have four minutes in the you know, with, with, with uh, the speakers here. And that's disgusting. But yeah. today, you know, I invite you to Saskatchewan. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. <laughs> well, Chief, Chief I, I agree with everything you said. Um, you know, this idea that Ottawa needs to, Ottawa's bureaucracy and politicians can manage First Nations people is not only paternalistic and insulting, but it's proven wrong. I mean, what does the bureaucracy in Ottawa have to teach you about good management? The amount of money that's being wasted in our nation's capital. 
you, you know, the only thing I disagree with you on is you say that it should be a third for the for the government, a third for the community. I don't think the federal government should get a third. I think it should get a lot less than a third. If the resources are developed in your land, you should get the money. The workers and the businesses that invest should get the money. We don't need the money to go to Ottawa where it will be squandered on bureaucracy. My goal is to, st to streamline, get the bureaucracy out of your life, have predictable fund funding flow so you can manage your future and let you keep your own source revenues, including through a First Nations resource charge, so that when this forestry company does harvest timber on your land, they pay the benefits to you first, and then your community can be the first to benefit from it. Uh, I want you to, I, I don't want to run your life, I want to run a small and competent government that stays out of your way and lets you fulfill your full potential. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over to microphone number one, please. Hi, Tep first guest, uh, Judy Wilson. My traditional name is Red Hummingbird Woman. I'm from unceded territory of the Sequapam Ulu. I just wanted to say uh, thanks to the ancestral lands, the people here, but I also want to recognize our veterans who stood with their back to you. That should be acknowledged. Thank you. And our LGBTQAA+ because in your speech you did not acknowledge missing murdered women you did not acknowledge the united nations you did not acknowledge the united nations declaration on the rights of indigenous people you did not acknowledge the inherent title rights where my people come from a majority of our province are inherent title and rights it's treaty rights and constitution rights but it's also inherent title and rights so you failed to to recognize that, you need to educate yourself on that. So the other part is that you also uh, failed to recognize our residential school survivors, who is a real live issue. If you're working to be the next prime minister in Canada, it tells me you have a lot of education to do in those fronts. And coming here and not acknowledging it is a first step that you need to do. And also, one of the biggest thing is our children and our families. And I want to also say underscore climate change. I did not hear anything about the climate crisis, climate change issues. There's a hurricane in the town right now that, from the remnants from Burrell. How can we? Dismiss climate crisis. It's real. It's happening. We have heat domes people are dying from. We have wildfires. That has to be one of your top agendas, not just the economy sure. yeah, and business exactly. to Canada. You, you have to address the climate sure. crisis. But I want to share my time with uh, Mary T.G. that talk about the children and family. That's so important, and that's what we're dealing with today. Thank you, Thank uh, you. Chief uh, Kofi. I'm Mary T.G., Chief Proxy, Tackle, Tackle Nation. First of all, I just wanted to um, acknowledge uh, my sister's words, and I just wanted to reference your, uh, your saying that Harper apologized. We endured the worst 10 years ever under the Harper Conservative government. An apology without an apology without money to back it and to make fundamental change are just hollow words in the wind. And we want to ensure that what we endured under the Harper re regime, we won't, under, uh, we won't go through that with you. So wh what assurances can you, make sh can you give us? I want to also ensure that under the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, it was a hard-fought battle that we won and it proved Canada discriminated against First Nations children. I want to ensure that you are going to honor any of the final settlement agreements that we have come to to ensure that there is discrimination has in fact truly ended and will never happen again. So I would like to have to understand like how you're going to do that to, to make us a, a clear plan and to ensure that the resources, the billions of dollars that we, have, were, that we fought for is going to be protected. And again, I must say that I haven't heard anything that, that talks about our social agenda. We talked about economic development. I just want you to know that the way that we are right now in Takla is that our children, our people, our lands will not be commodified and that we are the true, in, uh, to understand what inherent right means. I am hereditary chief. 
I am the Section 35 rights holder. So I think you need to really, again, educate yourself for that. And again, to have a really clear plan to ensure how are, how are you, how's your government going to ensure that no, no longer will our women ever go missing and go murdered again. So we need to hear clear, clear plans. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much for that. A lot of different issues you raised. Um, on the issue of the climate, our belief is the best way to tackle the issue of climate change is through technology and not taxes. Uh, taxes are not working. They are impoverishing our people. They are making it more expensive for people, particularly who live in rural and remote communities. Uh, we need to unleash the production of clean, emissions-free energy. That includes nuclear, hydroelectric, and other forms. But to do that, we need to speed up the approval process to get these things built. Uh, that will bring down costs, but also bring down emissions. On the issue of discrimination, uh, our party has been clear uh, when it comes to children's services. Our party has been clear that we support Jordan's principle and that we will give uh, equal treatment uh, and we will support a redress of past injustices and discrimination in uh, ch child services. Uh, and, uh, you know, we will, we will continue to work with you to resolve the other outstanding issues that you raised. Uh, and we believe that economic reconciliation is part of social progress. We need jobs and opportunity for First Nations communities that will ultimately give people a chance to escape poverty and to provide resources for clean water, for education, for health, and for other basic necessities. Both of those things have to go hand in hand. Social uh, support requires economic reconciliation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. So last speaker.